Welcome to episode two of our educational series on 1031 exchanges. Be sure to watch our series on passive real estate investing basics and real estate taxation basics. We also encourage you to read our book, How to Retire from Being a Landlord, which you can order for free on our website or on Amazon. So let's jump right into the core reason for doing a 1031 exchange, which is to defer the recognition of taxable gain upon the sale of a relinquished property by transferring its cost basis to a replacement property. By the way, sometimes you might hear the terms down leg and up leg, which mean relinquished and replacement properties, respectively. Put simply, doing a 1031 exchange allows you to kick the tax can down the road, and for some people, kicking the can until they pass away, at which time the can disappears. This is the result of another tax benefit known as the step up in basis, which allows your heirs to receive your property without inheriting the tax bill. So when we conduct a 1031 exchange, which taxes are we actually deferring? Well, in the broadest sense, we're talking about capital gains taxes. Capital gains taxes are imposed when a taxpayer recognizes a gain upon the sale of an asset. In a 1031 exchange, even though you're selling a rental property at a profit, the IRS treats your gains as not yet being recognized because you've reinvested the proceeds of that sale into another rental property. If you choose not to do a 1031 exchange, there are three types of capital gains taxes when you sell your property. First, you're taxed by the federal government on the appreciation of your property between the time you bought and sold it. Second, you're taxed on all of the federal depreciation deductions you have claimed while owning the property. Third, you may be taxed by your state. In California, for example, it is possible for your combined federal and state tax rate to be nearly 40% of your recognized gain. Even worse, depending on your outstanding debt, you may have a tax bill after you sell rental property that is greater than your net cash proceeds. Notwithstanding any additional capital expenditures you may have made to improve the property, the greater your appreciation and cumulative depreciation, the more gain you will recognize upon the sale of your rental. Suppose you bought a property for $450,000 10 years ago and spent another $50,000 in capital improvements. Let's also assume you claimed a total of $100,000 in depreciation over that time. Finally, let's say you can net $1 million after commissions and expenses if you sold that property. In this example, you'd pay taxes on $600,000 of recognized gain. By conducting a complete 1031 exchange, you can potentially defer the entire tax consequences of this sale, allowing you to reinvest all of your proceeds into the American real estate economy. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to check out our other education modules and visit our website at 1031capitalsolutions.com. Thank you.